some point. No. All right, we're live. Great, welcome everyone to, I feel like this is, I never remember which episode this is, give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 25. I think I'm pretty sure it's 25. Yeah, it's welcome 25. Welcome to episode 25. Welcome page. everyone to <laughs> episode 25 of Growth Talk. We're here with Natalie, the ENFJ. Natalie, how's everything going? Pretty good, pretty good. Of uh, the weather, it's a little down, but you know, <laughs> I'll pick it back I, up. You know, I was going to ask you about that. I thought that could be a good time. How's the weather? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's what people probably would be interested in, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, they're tuning in just for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, everyone, there is a dog around. So if um, don't have your volume up too high, because if it does, if the dog does bark, it's going to be a bit loud. So just to warn you all. Um, but the dog's been pretty good in the last 10 minutes or so. So, Thanks, so. Layla. Oh, don't say your name. What that calls her to bark? Yeah, she looked. Okay. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Well, um, Natalie, yeah, could you um, summarize what you, how you see like an ENFJ? Like if somebody is trying to type uh, an ENFJ out there, like, or, what what would you tell them? What, what would you tell them to look for? Yeah. So one thing that I like do whenever I'm thinking about people's types is like, I kind of have like in my head, like an imaginary tribe, right? So I have it like in my iteration, it's really close to what an actual tribe of like early humans would look like. And so for me, uh, everyone that I meet, I'm like, okay, what role would you play in that tribe? And certain types really like go well with certain archetypes in my tribe. And mm -hmm. so for me, like based off my type and like the way I kind of see myself is it feels a lot like um, like the town healer, if that makes sense. Yeah. So a lot of people rely on you. There's like always a lot of stuff to do. And there's also like a lot of nurturing aspects that go into that. And like the end goal for every tribe healer would be to make sure that everyone feels well enough to perform their other duties like within the tribe and i don't know that's just been like the best way that i can kind of make sense to it because if i like start yeah, to piece like, hard at all i'm like this is depressing like what do you mean i've got so many feelings and i'm like no 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 zoom out <laughs> you're like yeah the common archetype kind mm -hmm. of in a way right yeah um, right so like really you're you're that's kind of in the forefront of your mind is like the tribe, the roles within the tribe and like the different archetypes you're seeing amongst people and how they kind of fit into that whole collective. Is that kind of what your yeah. brain is doing automatically or? Yeah, well, it's kind of hard to tell if it was automatic before I started uh, tuning into ops. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, but I think that like tuning into ops has just been very good to like maybe create more accurate roles for what I'm seeing because I have mm -hmm. now like terms to define certain characteristics. Yeah. Um, and I forgot your question already, so. <laughs> um, I've forgotten what it was too, actually. It was, uh... oh yeah, like, are you just arch like thinking of- Oh, wait, 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 wait. Archetypes all the time, I guess, or mostly. That's yeah. Right. God. You okay? Dog. Yeah, no, the dog bark. Um, oh, okay. Oh, that didn't even wait, sound like a bark. It sounded like something like, Oh, Got no, I fell okay. over and like had like a little attack. Um, okay. No, so, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay. Yes, my brain is naturally trying to pick up on those patterns for like whenever I'm, you know, just around other people. I would say that whenever I'm by myself, it's kind of hard for me to like do that ping <laughs> of like creating those associations in like categories, <laughs> surprise <laughs> categories. <laughs> yeah. But it is pretty special for me. All right. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. Hope that's not too loud. Um, oh wait. Hopefully, hopefully she'll settle down. Is it is a she or a he? It's a she. It's a she. Okay. Yeah. Well. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, did you uh, did you read in the in the intro thing the the um, the spirit animal thing? I so, did. I did. <laughs> okay. I feel like I need to like ask or like have people process that before we or think about that before we have the interview because it's such a weird question. But yeah, without yeah. further ado, what is how would you 
say, what is the spirit animal of your last animal? What do you, what, what animal or what, whatever would represent that, do you think? So for me specifically with like the double masculine as he consume, I see, wait, just to make sure you, you mean like the last animal or the last. Oh, animal? no, no. I mean, uh, the, sorry, the last function and like what okay. the spirit animal of that would be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I had, I had it both ways. I was thinking about yeah. this like all night last night. <laughs> I couldn't oh, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> but like for the last function to me, like for mine, it feels a lot like a fox. Like, I'm just, like, okay. kind of, like, trying to, like, weasel my way around stuff, like, not cause too much of an impact, like, get exactly what I want, and then do it in, like, super clever ways without, like, <laughs> exposing myself. <laughs> that sounds pretty, it's TI, right? Yeah, so that sounds yeah. pretty, pretty TI, and uh, and I like that you compared a t the function to a fox, because it's, like, for me, it's, like, my favorite animal, and it's, like, yeah, we are kind really? of, like, a fox in a way, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's cool. Awesome. Okay. So it's like a like a fox kind of um this was similar to so uh we had Rose on here who's an ISFJ and hers was in in E and for hers hers was like a raccoon like getting into stuff. <laughs> a trash like, panda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like that's a really good one in E as well. But it's kind of like a similar uh thing I think. Um uh, those two. Yeah. But uh um uh, yeah. Cool. Through I don't it. Know. Um, I should have gone through and studied that one. I was like trying to like pick something that was like super unique, and I was like, I have to have something that no one else has thought of and set on a uh, video. No, we haven't, <laughs> no, we haven't had a fox yet, so technically, I don't think we've had actually any overlap. Um, I've gotten some pretty weird answers. I think one person was a whale, which I don't know. How, <laughs> I don't know how they got to whale. But, I kind of like that though. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could remember what even that related to. Like, how do you? <laughs> It's like my demon SI is a whale because it's big and it's in the ocean. I don't know. It's something like, that. like does your SI swim? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Funny. Cool. Um, so how how long ago did you get typed? By the way, I think it hasn't been super long, has it? Or um, so I got typed in. I submitted in June of 2021 and okay. got my type back in July of 2021. Oh, so it's been a, oh, it's been a while actually. Okay, okay. Yeah. Cool. Was it? Yeah, but yeah. I was gonna say like I didn't really like come out and like tell anyone what my type was until I think like maybe February of this okay. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of waited a while. I was like very big about like processing like the implications of like receiving my type and like being able to identify the patterns in my own self without like having to get like clouded up by other people that uh, sounds like a good plan yeah okay cool. <laughs> yeah listen to the videos i pay attention <laughs> apparently yeah well i mean i mean a lot of people they get their type and then they're just like on discord still or they're whatever and they're like yeah hey, don't you need to like go spend some time thinking about no, no, no. alone it hits them like a week later and they're like oh god wait a second you know like <laughs> what am i <laughs> Yeah, uh, what have I done? Yeah, so so that's good. Um, do you um, what, is it kind of what you're expecting, or was it a complete shock? Kind of what you got, or so you know, like I think that I was in the class for like maybe a year and a half before I got typed, and within a year and a half, like I really got that message beaten into me. Like you're you're never gonna know what your type is. Like you're gonna get it upside down. Yeah. So I was very cautious to like not really um, assume that I would be any specific type. Um, but what the coins that I was sure about were decider. I was sure that I was audio. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. And then, yeah. And then I knew I was energy dom. But I genuinely like to my core thought that I was like save your sleep. And so that one was like the only one that really shocked me because I was like, well, what the fuck am I doing all the time? <laughs> But it's yeah. pretty easy with those middle functions or middle animals, like get them back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, and I was shocked to get my type. Like, I feel like most of my life has been spent, like, you know, learning and working on stuff and like, just like super high, like work ethic. So like in whenever I received my type, it bothered me to my core that I was a feeler. Like that was like, oh, really? like, okay. yeah. And I, and of course, what did I do as a savior feeler? I went and cried on the floor. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> like why was I shocked I don't know but yeah. <laughs> I, I just had like this huge existential crisis I was like I'm stupid <laughs> oh, okay. That's what, uh, okay. yeah a lot of feelers are are not happy to be feelers and I'm like why that seems like a good thing to be able to to feel stuff then and then yeah if you feel like it's it means you're stupid then i can imagine that being pretty like but you don't think that now bro right like if you're a savior feeler that that means that you're no i i don't think that now um in fact i've kind of learned that the opposite tends to be almost true mm -hmm. on the video where it's just if you get like the right person and their savior feeler there's like a great opportunity to prioritize what you need to learn and mm -hmm. I think that like seeing that pattern within myself first and then finding like people in the community that I trusted and thought were like brilliant and like seeing that they were savior feeler, it made me be like, okay, like eliminate that stupid Myers-Briggs anecdote from your mind. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Like some of the hardest people I like hardest working people I know are like savior feelers. And to me, like still Myers-Briggs land. Oh my God. How? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel like Myers Briggs is like poison the well in so many different ways. Yeah, because uh, all of us are still like falling into the stereotype trap from that stupid system, right? Um, yeah, it, it, like, I know I do. It's almost unavoidable, even though you know, like, okay, we've moved on since then, but still, like, you can't help but like. I think it's a lot of people struggle with getting their type is kind of like the Myers Briggs stereotypes. Like, well, I'm not very organized, so I can't be OI or you know whatever is out there. Yeah. I mean, I even thought that too. Like, I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not organized. I have two shirts on the floor. Like I couldn't be alive. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you have more shirts on the floor than I do right now. So I'm just supposed to oh, Don't tell me that. I'm gonna die. I usually have a lot more. So you just caught me in the <laughs> You're just having a good day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This webcam shows a lot more stuff in my room now, so I'm like, okay, I kind of have to make it look more like I'm some kind of an adult. Uh, so yeah. Stuff away. <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> I can't let them know I'm not an adult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, well, cool. Um, yeah, sounds like you really took a really good approach to, yeah, kind of processing your type and, and getting that Thank settled. You. And um, so, do you? Um, now that it well, now that you're like settled with it, uh, can you see, um, especially like when you were younger, kind of the issues that you had? Like, did you like when you were young? Could you see like the the ENFJ side of yourself? Did, did you see yourself being tribal of self? Did you see yourself being a feeler? And I all yeah, time? yeah. I think that since I've had so much time to like process what my type is, like it's almost like now that i'm looking at it i've brought back memories that actually serve it because to me they were like so normal at the time that it was like why would i hang on to this uh mm -hmm. i only remember the times that i did the tea or like you know i stood up for myself but i i kind of realized now like it was non-stop from the time that i was born i i mean maybe not the very second that i was born but my mom said that within like a few days of like you know me coming out the womb like I was trying to learn how to smile and like, I would like, <laughs> like, like just try to like get people to follow along with my eyes. And then as a, as a little kid for Christmases and stuff like that, like I would ask um, Santa Claus for presents for my brother. Um, every oh. year it was presents <laughs> for my brother. And then starting at age three, it was world peace. Um, and that one, you know, that didn't happen. <laughs> so, yeah, I uh, like, uh, never gives you. This sounds <laughs> it sounds so stupid, but like I knew Santa Claus wasn't real by age four because I had asked for world peace like the previous year, and nothing had changed because I was still watching the news. And so, like, I held on to that. Like, I kept that one to myself. I was like, I can't tell my brother; he still believes. <laughs> Again, de. Yeah. Well, he believes. I can't say it out loud. <laughs> and like. My dad also tells this story of um, whenever I was about four, we were walking around in a mall and my dad was younger at the time. And he said that he had on like his nice collared shirt. So we we're walking through this mall and my dad thinks to himself like, man, I must be looking really good today because everyone that I'm passing is smiling at me and winking at me. He's like, well, what's the difference? Like, why is this happening? 
And so we make it into a TJ Maxx and he just turns and looks at me and I'm beaming, like just big smiles, like staring at everyone. And he looks at me and he's like, Natalie, like, what are you doing? And I said, you know, well, I said, dad, if you smile at people, they smile back and it makes them happy. So <laughs> that was probably like the best story for me to be like, oh my God, I've been like this forever. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That's like, uh, oh, that's really cool. So like immediately, like as soon as a couple days out of the room, you're like, all right, <clears throat> first thing to get this FE going. Okay. <laughs> Let's get twitching on the face. I got to build up these muscles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to make people happy. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I mean, that's probably the, the, the cutest childhood story I think I've seen. <laughs> like, yeah. You have to hand for Christmas presents for your brother. You wanted more people. <laughs> and then, you're like, if I smile at people, they're happy. So I smile at them. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm like, if I don't get a me as a kid, I'm going to be so pissed because <laughs> my mom says that I was the easiest kid in the I entire just to world. Ask you that. Yeah, it sounds like you were super <laughs> easy as a kid. Yeah, um, like to the point where like I was so easygoing and like quiet that my parents would lead me places because they would just totally forget. Like my brother, he's like some type of IP and like the loudest crier in the room gets the most attention and that was him. <laughs> So they were constantly trying to put fires out with him, and I was just shutting the hell up and sitting the fuck down. Like, and smiling, probably. <laughs> yeah, and smiling, yeah. Okay. Where, I, like, at some point, were you kind of, did you have, like, a phase where your parents were like, whoa, what the hell, what's going on with, with Natalie? This is a rough patch. Um, I don't know. Like, it, it's hard for me to tell if, like, my parents specifically, like, I just want to over categorize everything. So like, mm -hmm. for me, I'm like, well, I was never really understood. So I don't know if that was like specific to my parents. I don't think it was. Mm -hmm. But um, like, now that I know typing, like, I understand my parents are like, all in Delta quad. Hey, buddy. They're all in Delta quad. So it was like, I never really stood in Delta from the quad. beginning. I, I would get confused. I do too. I can't believe I was trying to get smart and it didn't work. <laughs> Oh, you don't know what he. <laughs> oh uh, no, it's like T E N E, like those two. Oh, that's Delta. Okay, okay, so yeah, all... yeah, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure either. I just know ours is called Beta. That's the only one I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. I... <laughs> <laughs> like a month ago, I was like, I'm tired of people talking about these quads and me not knowing what they mean. But yeah, my yeah. parents have like the T E F I and N E S I functions. So oh, okay. rough. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, like that was like part of it too. Like I never really took anything out on my parents. Like I knew that they wanted to understand me, but like they would always tell me like, I don't understand what you're trying to say. And I was like, well, shit fire. Like, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Like, why can't you just let me be? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I th yeah. I think I have a similar thing. In my th I think everyone's in ESI as well on that axis. And then I'm not sure if my mom's FE or FI, one of those things, but yeah, definitely feels like there's a lot of misunderstandings and a lot of communication issues, but then also being blast last doesn't help <laughs> communicating anything, especially as a kid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can relate. So I'm sorry. She's driving me insane. One second, let's get the boat. <laughs> yeah. You it's have an dog. One boat, so I need a new one. She just wants to play. <laughs> All right, chat. Yeah, I so, the, oh, you're back. Oh, that's quick. Yeah. I was actually like, I kind of wanted to ask you some questions um, about, I know that this is an interview with me. I'm going to hijack it if you don't mind. Yeah, like, you can ask questions too. It's, it's more of a conversation than, I mean, we call okay. it an interview, but. Yeah. Um, why are you so upset? Is it because I don't, I'm not giving you all my attention? Oh, can you do it? Can you do a favor? Do me a favor. So my um my girlfriend's watching and she loves dogs. Could you could we see the dog just for a second? I think she's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah, like yeah. the thing, especially? Hi right, Victoria, I hope you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> now God forgive me. I'm gonna lock her out of the room. I don't care. I'm a bad dog sitter. <laughs> If you're, sh you don't have to. Like, if I don't want to. No, I'm going to. That's she broke a pen. She broke a pen. She's just being a bad dog, and she needs to go okay. take a nap. Bye, Layla. 
God, what if my like brother comes back and watches this and he's like, what did you let my dog do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let her chill. Your brother does, was... so, I mean, it's, you know. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> He'll forget about it. <laughs> okay. Is that better? All right. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, um, but yeah, if you have to go check on her or anything, it's, it's totally fine. I don't want to. No, she just wants attention. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Um, oh yeah. The question that I was going to ask is like, like, so whenever you were explaining stuff like to your parents, like, did you, oh, God, it's kind of hard cause you are blast off, but mm. did you feel like you had to go through like multiple iterations of like the same message just to try to like latch on and get them to understand? Cause that was something that I noticed. And I think for me, it was probably easier cause I am blast birth, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, like, uh, I can relate to that where you just, you feel like you didn't say it right the first time and you see, you say it again and you actually end up just repeating yourself and then you try it yeah. again. And okay. I just said the exact same thing. And they're yeah. like, no, we get it. We get it. Like, are you, I don't think you get it. Are you sure you get it? Cause I don't feel like you get it. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. As a kid, it was more like, it was just so much TI that my parents thought I was full of shit. Like, uh, I wish I had a good example. Maybe I can just just make something up but like let's say like <laughs> dude in my world make it up make okay, it up okay. <laughs> so okay let's say i had a test for school or something and i ended up like um doing bad on the test or something and my parents were mad instead of just being like yeah sorry i should have blah, 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 or something simple it'd be like well i had to go home because i was hungry and i felt like if if i was hungry taking the test i wouldn't be able to take the test very well so i thought i would go home and get something to eat and then try to come back and I'd be back before time because usually the um, usually it takes like a 10 minute walk. But unfortunately, it took 20 minutes because um, I actually went the wrong way and I didn't mean to go the wrong way. So when I got there, I, I tried to do the test, but I didn't have enough time to do the test. So I, I, I thought, OK, maybe if I just do C for all of them, then I'll have at least 50. You know, it'd be like some really long yeah. fucking thing for like 20 minutes. And they'd be like they would just think I was lying. <laughs> and really, all of that was exactly true. There were so many TI steps. They're just like, "What the fuck are you?" Like, so why? Why are you still like, building on this? Like, can you just like apologize and move on? Yeah, there was this is what I needed to do, right? Be like, "Yeah, I got to the test late. I, I, I was, yeah, sorry, and then I had to rush, and then you know, yeah." But I didn't know how to do that yet, so you know. Right, and also like it's just like, well, if I if I'm gonna start explaining it to you, I'm gonna give you every single step along the way, so that way yeah. you really know everything I did, maybe. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like, well, if they just understand it exactly all the logic, they'd be like, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> that <Yeah>. never happened. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> they were thinking about like the mortgage and then like what bills are coming out like, yeah, not, yeah. like exactly. why did little tommy not make you do tests on time <laughs> exactly yeah so. <laughs> it was rough yeah or sometimes i just say something just in a really demon effy way where it just came off like i was being an asshole when i wasn't it just so because sometimes yeah. pure ti can seem like like psychopathic like <laughs> a little bit right like it's just yeah you know, but it's just literally just the thing and sometimes there's no emotional packaging on it then it is yeah like excuse me you know like that's actually like now that you mentioned that that is something that i also really struggle with and like i feel oh, really? like people have like this expectation where it's like oh you're lead effie like you're gonna be mm -hmm. like so emotionally nice and it's like yeah, but like if I make it all the way down to my TI, like if I finally have to give that to you, it's going to sound like so cruel and like cold and distant, but it's mm -hmm. just like 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 I don't even know how you would package TI in a way that would like seem appropriate or like, you know, emotionally yeah. like nice. Like I don't know, it's just like like I'm just explaining to you. Why are you upset? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So it's not always the case where everything is nice and easily digestible, I guess. Sometimes it's like, okay, here's the, here's the fucking facts, dude. I didn't want to have yeah. to go here, but, you know. 
<laughs> yeah yeah okay. and then at work it's really nice because like if i i can like write an email in the most asshole way that i want and then mm -hmm. just like degrade like every piece of work <laughs> someone else has done you know but then like i'm like then i go take take a little walk for a few seconds i come back and i'm like okay happy face let's tell them that everything's great but wrong <laughs> oh man so it's, just, it's like good cop bad cop kind of right like yeah. he's good cop <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's funny <laughs> all right interesting well um do you have any uh it, before you got type were you kind of aware of any of like the demon ti or demon se stuff like at all did you have kind of a hint that like there might be something that like could be an issue or um, um yeah, no, no, no. I see what you're saying. I'm just trying to like process it through one time before I just spew random stuff out. Uh, <laughs> and like, like, obviously, the answer is yes, just because I'm not gonna like pretend like, no, I was perfect growing up. And like, I could SE every single time. Mm -hmm. But like, whenever I like look in and like try to maybe dissect the problem, it was more so just like, like, the outside world was just very difficult for me as a child because it was so like physically mentally emotionally draining and so it was like i liked places that like i understood like even how to walk through the hallways or like i knew that there were going to be people where i could just kind of go unconscious a little bit because they would like guide me through things okay um and like a lot of it had to do with the fact that like like i was trying to find somewhere in my brain to put everything so just like whenever teachers would redecorate their rooms or like whenever i had to do like a chapter long reading it was just i would try my best like so hard because i wanted to like you know do well enough for them but at the end of the day like I, it would put me straight to sleep. Like I couldn't watch movies. Like every time I tried to read a book, I fell asleep. It was just like so laborious for me to even try to like go through like a daily, like, you know, if my daily routine changed, it was just uh -huh. almost like world ending because I was like, well, like what, what, what am I supposed to do? Like, I've never seen this before. Like, like, uh, like what? And then with masculine SE, like all the new stuff to me was so dangerous. Cause I was like, if it weren't dangerous, I would have already known about it. I would have already seen it. So now I got to kind of like suss out, like, is this, um, like, is this test, like, are they giving it to me to like, kind of like, like to show that I'm stupid? Like, or oh, is okay. this like, yeah. is this new dish? Like, are they giving it to me to like make fun of me because I won't like it? Like oh, those were like wow. the things that were like, threats, like to you a little bit. Like, yeah. Threats. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it was just like all i wanted to do was like like go to my like my homeroom teacher's classroom i wanted to go to my room in the house like i wanted to go to my spaces so that way i could just sit at the end of the day close my eyes and like like just go like almost like comatose like meditation like that's not a real thing comatose meditation those are just two words i put together <laughs> <You're still laughs> okay, <right>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I would just close my eyes and try to remember every single thing that had happened to me, like in the day. And then like, like in my brain, I was like, okay, was that a threat? No. Okay, I, I can stick that oh, like right here awesome. in my like mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like, I didn't want to be scared of everything. But like, the matter of the fact was like, I was a very scared child. Like, I just didn't understand. Like, like, I was like, well, if it weren't bad, like, I would already know it. And I would already have it like all this new stuff just no get it out of here i don't want it <laughs> that's really like illuminating i think for me i would have never i guess i would have never known that they like the new stuff can feel like a threat and like it's there to kind of potentially make you look bad right like yeah like I can actually, <laughs> oddly enough being like even though i'm like the opposite type it can definitely relate to that where it's like okay something new is thrown at me and it's like okay, can I adapt to this quick enough? Because I don't want others to like see me fail at something, you know? So I'm like, yeah. okay, new thing. Okay, all right, I have to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm, 
I'm responsible to knock this out of the park, but man, am I like not wanting to, and I feel mm -hmm. dra super drained by it and intimidated and everything. Yeah. When it's something like that. And it's like, mostly because I don't want, I don't want others to see me like not do well at something, yeah. you know, it's like the IP yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it, I, I, so I, it feels like a threat to me as well. And when something's completely new, um, in some cases, um, you know, yeah, I mean, it makes sense because, you know, I like to think that like, we're just like, we're the same type, just like working like in a loop and we like, we're going in opposite directions, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. we have the same problems. It's just what direction Starting at a different we get path. to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, but that's, that's really like good foresight for you to go and like, okay was this a threat? Was this actually okay? Like, instead of just like going about your day and letting that like, mm -hmm. just stay there. Like, eat actually... away. Yeah, yeah, right. Like you actually like settled that in yourself, you know? Um... Yeah. Well, I mean, it was just survival for me. Like, like I knew, I knew my parents knew early on that it was just like, I was a very anxious kid. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like I did have, like I was working with my parents and they'd be like, okay, you know, the average dinner table conversation so Natalie, what did you get into at school today? And then here come my waterworks, and I'm like, ah, they did this. Mm -hmm. And so having my parents there to like, you know, kind of lift me back up after I would explain to them what I was afraid of, they were very essential for me to like work towards growth. Because my dad would ask me every day after we would go over what happened at school, he would say, "Did you win today or did you lose today?" And it was like, I could like, like trick myself into not being afraid of all the new stuff because mm -hmm. I knew I needed to go home and tell my dad that I won the day. And I knew I was gonna have to tell him why I won the day. So like, uh, I like okay. got into this little system of like, I was like, well, I won today because they served the most disgusting food at lunch. And I, I ate did it. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't a big win, but it was a win. <laughs> Your dad's like, I had a girl. That's my girl. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But that was the thing. But so it was like, um, it sounded like that was a bit of pressure, but maybe more in a good way, I guess. Or yeah, I think it was well, well intentioned pressure is the way that I look at it. Like, sure. yeah, because with any type of pressure, it can become overwhelming at a certain point, and like, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to do with the individuals providing the pressure as much as it is like, okay, like you know, you just worked out your brain, you've got sore spots, like you can't go do another workout until you recover those like sore muscles. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's just how I look at it. <laughs> Other people look at it like your parents are crazy. Like, what the hell did you do growing up? <laughs> <laughs> it's all perspective, like, right? Like, right. <laughs> I, guess it, I mean, I could see how like that would both be tough, but and then also be good. I think it depends on like, it depends on the, like the vibe, the vibe. I don't know another word for this. The kind of the vibe of your parent, where they're like, "Did you win today?" Or are they yeah. like, "How'd it go? Did you win today?" You know what I mean? There's a different yeah. like, sort of yeah. Yeah, connection there. Where they're cheering you on, or they're like, "You better have won today." You know, which I'm guessing <laughs> well, like, is uh, a good version of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, like he's lead masculine de, so you can just imagine like the pressure that just already comes from that. Like yeah. you know. Anytime mm -hmm. you're in a room with a lead mask on PE, it's like, eh, better be careful. And then on top of that, like, he was just always like, he would ask my mom, he's like, why does this kid cry so much? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like <for beta>. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, look, let's talk a bit about um, emotional processing, if you don't mind. Just because I'm kind That's of like cool. trying to figure out um, so apparently it's different for FIs than FEs, I guess, right? I think if you heard, heard of that, kind of the FIs do it alone, I guess. Yes. Um, and then I'm wondering like, what's the crossover? You know what I mean? Like what, what's, okay. what is, the, what is the best way, regardless of what type you are to actually get past, or maybe yeah. get past is not the right language for that, but like, how do you deal with like, you know, um, emotions good and bad and like, so. Yeah. Or do you, is it for you like kind of the stereotypical thing with FVs that you go to people and you process it with people? Do you do things alone? What's like, do you have? Um... So, okay. I'm going to just like, like blurt out a little 
bit about how I see the differences in FE and FI. Yeah, that'd be um, great. And yeah. then I think that from there, I could probably work closer into how I do it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the stereotype for like FE emotional processing is, oh, like I've got to tell everyone I know about it. And mm -hmm. like, then once I tell them, I can then feel better. Um, I don't really think that's true. The way I'm kind of seeing it in reality is that FE is just like, like it's willing to take in input in order to speed up the process of, you know, I guess emotionally processing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's accepting input from like TI trusted sources. So if I think that you've gone through this and you have that like experience and you've like built a way around the emotional problem, I'll trust you. I'll take that and then use it to speed things up for myself. Um, and then the way that I kind of see FI is very like, like I see it as like emotional stress testing over and over again. Like it's like a deep wealth of like, just, I guess it almost feels like security but it gets to be so deep because it's constantly stress tested. Just mm -hmm. like, you know, whenever you and I have an idea and we're like, okay, like um, time to see if I can break this. Mm -hmm. Like that same phenomena is occurring with FI, but okay. whenever you break the things that you like and don't like, you can build them up even higher. So mm -hmm. that comes with the intensity that, you know, we all can kind of like see in FI, like the dark cloud and also like the super beaming, like I'm so positive all the time. Guess why? That person's constantly stress testing their emotions. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I would say that originally it was like, it was really hard for me to emotionally process stuff because there weren't many sources that I trusted um, having gone through like, whatever situation I was in, you know, it was like, okay, like, I don't think that you're a credible enough source for me to be taking your advice. But like, there was like my mom, my dad, and then, you know, Can I asked like, what, um, what would you say makes somebody a credible source? Would you say it's so subjective? Like it is oh. literally so subjective, but I guess for me, it was like, okay, like, um, here, I'll actually get into how I emotionally process. So basically every time that I go through something where I can feel like my physical body sense is changing and like the pressure in my head, like increasing, like, I'm like, okay, here it is. I'm getting emotional. All right. So what do I do? Every single time I take what I'm going through and turn it into whatever type of equation that I can. And so whenever you're going through a situation and you're trying to turn it into an equation, or I guess whenever I am, it's like, okay, what's my independent variable and what's my dependent variable? And, you know, this probably started around the time that I started learning algebra, so like sixth grade. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, I just knew, I was like, okay, take that and do that like over here whenever people like make you upset. Mm -hmm. And so if you can identify your independent variable, you can change your dependent variable. So, and then the way that I'm going about it is just like, doing lots of iterations like blast play style like go through like okay so um let's say my mom calls me and she's like like i hated the way that you cooked dinner the other day all right there's a million different ways that you can look at that one thing and you could be like oh my mom's such a bitch or like oh i didn't do good enough or like oh i knew my oven wasn't good enough to be cooking that dish. yeah or even or like, like yo like what's going on with mom she doesn't usually say yeah stuff. right <laughs> Yeah. So then it's like, okay, like in that situation, what's your independent variable going to be? And it's like, okay, the independent variable for me is like, I already cooked dinner. Like that's not going to change. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess I could go through and try to change it, but like it already happened. So what's the dependent variable? Well, it's mom. Like mom just had something to say and it's like, okay, well, let me like check with my own standards. Did I cook dinner the way that I wanted to? uh give me about 20 minutes to wonder about that and it's like mm -hmm. wait yeah i did so then at that point like it's very easy to like relieve your chemicals because it's like or it's very easy for me to relieve my chemicals because like like you know like what does it it's matter kind of, is it, that is was it always what I kept like, running into. you have to take account of what you can control and what you can't sort of yeah exactly that's that a little bit okay 
yeah 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 sorry mm-hmm. i didn't mean to cut you off <laughs> no you didn't no no worries okay but yeah it's just like for me yeah i guess that now that you said it like that i never really looked at it that way but it was a lot about like okay what's in control and what's out of control because mm-hmm. i can navigate through that really quickly um but then you know if i can just pay really close attention to what was in and out of control then i can relieve like the own pressure from myself and i can readjust my expectations and you know i i'm lucky enough to have a lot of energy i can do this really quickly but like for a lot of people i understand that takes time and yeah. effort <laughs> yeah that i mean that's really good i mean yeah not only having like a, like a, a process for that but then i think also even like um i think once you've arrived at the conclusion where you're able to take the pressure off yourself it's still hard Sometimes. to do that you know even yeah. though you see it like okay this isn't my fault mm-hmm. like I, like it's still this pressure with me of demon effie i think even if like i can understand that like okay relax you know but like i can't but maybe like i think when you're a savior effie i think maybe it's easier for you to be like to kind of like actually like actually really let go of that and everything so yeah i'm trying to get on your level when it comes to that stuff but uh, <laughs> okay yeah, well i've been like, working on it for like, 23 so... years <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a while but I, you know i got time yeah you got time um, so so it sounds like sometimes emotional stuff that it is just like internal for you that's not necessarily something you have to bounce um, around or no i think that well masculine ti no you're wrong uh no you're actually pretty right uh <laughs> like like i have a lot of experiences where by being around other people like you know i absorb their emotions and it's all based on like like i see the way that someone moves i see the way that they're breathing like i see where their eyes are looking at and i'm making connections to like all the different like data points that i'm getting Mm -hmm. and um and then in turn like that makes my chemicals spike and like drop and stuff like that um so i guess if you wanted to call that emotions, you could, it's never really felt very emotional to me. I mean, it does feel scary because brain chemicals that cause emotions are going on, but mm-hmm. like, I never really, I don't claim those. That's just kind of what happens to this machine that I'm in. Okay. <laughs> but then, yeah, like for me, like if I ever tried to replicate my own emotion, it would just be through my own self. <laughs> But I, I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to explain. I can keep trying, but I'd have to get some leading questions. <laughs> uh, I think I think I get the gist of it. I actually wanted to go back to one thing that you said that I thought was really interesting, and I'm wondering if you had more insight into it. Um, when you were talking about FIs sort of stress testing themselves, like what you do with TI, with the TI part, totally makes sense. Like how mm-hmm. that's like happening. Um, and I know you're not FI, but do you have any insight on like how FIs are kind of doing that to themselves or what that looks like? Mm-hmm. I don't know. We can, we can try talking out. Um, yeah, maybe, like I said, I know you're not FI, so it might not be. Like, I know, I know. But I, like, yeah. so yeah, like my parents, they both have FI, my boyfriend's got FI. And basically what I kind of have learned is that like, like the simplest of things that happen at the right timing um can cause like a long lasting emotional response um and a favorite blankie so um for my mom whenever she was a teenager she went to watch gone with the wind and she said that she had her two best friends with her and she said that she related to the character so like my mom has like boxes and boxes of Gone with the Wind memorabilia. And, you know, to Effie, it's like, dude, that's fucking weird. Like, <laughs> what the hell? But then, you know, like, now that I'm older and not a douchebag, I'll ask her about it. <laughs> well, it's, all, it's also like SD weird as well, I think, right? Yeah, it's yeah. It's like, that's not popular. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, I, like, I. <laughs> I ask her about it now and I'm like, so like, like, like why? And like, she's very like emotionally honest with me and says like, that was just the happiest that I had been like up until that point. Oh, wow. And so like, she was like, crazy. yeah. Well, I mean, for me, I see it as like an experience, you know, like what if she wouldn't have liked the movie because her two friends weren't with her, you know? 
Okay. Like, yeah. I, there's like a million things, but yeah, you're right. Um, and that's kind of like the equation that I'm boiling it down to is it, it like from the outside perspective, the FI favorite blankies just seem so random. But if I had to try to explain it and like, tr like this is not scientific, this is stupid, this is wrong for anyone watching, like don't pay attention to this. But um, the way that I see it is that like the right cocktail, like emotional cocktail delivery just so happened to explode at the right timing, like, could be anything you could have been having a bad day and then you saw an orange cat and that made you happy and from there on out like it's like a, like they like orange cats and it's yeah. just it's just like something so impactful to the brain that it sticks around forever and in order to make sure that it's truly the favorite they've got to test it okay like okay like i see a black cat i mean it's all right but it doesn't give me that same chemical cocktail so therefore it's like that's not my favorite and mm -hmm. that only further solidifies that an orange cat would be the favorite mm -hmm. and that's just kind of what i'm picking up now i mean there's so much more to it because there's like the nuances of like you know like tradition family like just so many things that can go into it but it does seem to be so simple that it's like doesn't seem real to us <laughs> But then there's also a lot of respect for that, right? Like, it's just like, it's so pure, like in my eyes. I'm like, it's not like tainted by like all these weird, like, well, I like orange cats if I'm like on a gray road, but I don't like orange cats on a green road. Like, what? <laughs> they don't go together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I can kind of relate to it. Yeah, like Gone with the Wind. I'd probably, I don't know if I can relate to that that much, but. I can I hate that um, movie so much. I feel like I have a couple of FI <laughs> things, but not many. Um, like when I was um, when I was really young, uh, my parents were divorced. Well, still divorced, but especially when I was really young. <laughs> Sorry to make um, a laugh. Just the way you said. <laughs> no, no, I'm like, I'm not, no. <laughs> um, so my dad would pick me up every second Friday from uh, from the thing before kindergarten, preschool, right? Preschool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So every Friday night, I'm super excited. My dad gets to pick me up. Only got to see him once every two weeks. Uh, and I had so much fun in this house. And every time he'd pick me up, he would always smell like cigarettes because he smoked back mm -hmm. then. Yeah. And so I've always associated with that smell of cigarettes being right like that Friday night. And so I've actually mm -hmm. always liked it when people smell like cigarettes, oddly enough, because of like that that one yeah. thing. Yeah. And I feel like that's with my like moly if I <laughs> with the rest. Of <laughs> Yeah. But like, I mean, one, it, it's just like, it's refreshing, like to like have those like positive memories and associations. Mm -hmm. Like, it is but I mean, I don't know, I, I feel like that. If you're like, thinking about what I just said, it, it, it kind of lines up, you know, like, every time you got to smell the cigarettes, it was like all the all the chemicals would fire off at the right time. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's amazing to me how like now you're so much older and you still like you still enjoy it like i think that that's incredible yeah. that the brain can do that yeah no no cigarettes smell good. That's, that's you that's just you but you know that's cool <laughs> yeah it's a bit of a weird one but <laughs> no i yeah. get it that, like, that's like one the smell thing. of beer the smell of beer for me i'm like it's so, it just smells so disgustingly awesome like i'm like this is great <laughs> I hate it, but I hate drinking, but I love the smell of beer. I'm like, get that bread water. Over here, uh, okay. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. 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 <laughs> beer actually smells kind of good, you know, as long as it hasn't been sitting in your room for like two weeks in the bottle where there's like this much in the, in the, <laughs> and it's kind of bad, but you got it's experience like with that one. <laughs> pretty good, you know. Oh, I don't have any experience with that. I don't know. That's just, that's just a guess. I, I, believe, I would imagine it wouldn't smell good, but I have no idea personally, of course. <laughs> and i'm not lying right now <laughs> that's funny all right and my brain's like trying to like where are we at within this thing now like what have we um oh yeah um wait okay i sorry i'm just drawing a blank right now um, I do have another question, though. Um, 
since getting typed and getting into the system, how has that affected your life? I'm assuming in a positive way, but maybe it's not all positive. Maybe. Uh, I think it's, well, I mean, it's all neutral positive, like, right? Like every experience I've had with odds besides being in the fucking discord. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to rant because I think it's just, it, it's, it's amazing that people can connect over it. So I don't want to like shit on it. You know what I'm saying? But no, like the Discord triggers the fuck out of me sometimes too. So I'm like wondering. Oh, hundred like, percent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like I say this, and it, this is not aimed at any specific person. And but, like, oh my god, whenever I interact with other people, I am constantly astonished that the human race like carries on. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm like. <laughs> Like, how do you live on the same planet as me? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but we, we can have a, a decider combo after the, the stream as well. <laughs> get into the, I have right some stories as well. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, okay, back to your question. Um, stop shitting around, Holly. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I would say the ops has been really positive because I think that, um, like, like there's so much content on growth and that was the only reason i joined ops like i heard like from a coworker, like it was like oh they've got a lot of positive messages they'll make fun of you and i was like i love being made fun of okay this is great let me sign up uh <laughs> and um it really like it cuts down for me it, it for me it's like almost the most efficient system to like get growth messages as well as like understanding of like like how the humans around me behave um like for instance if i were to try to find all the content they were talking about i'd have to watch tony robbins for like 500 hours i'd have to search out yeah. japanese hair guy like it's just it's, it's just been, yeah i know i'm not gonna say Which one's uh, hair guy? <laughs> god i forget his name every time but because it, uh. it's just too funny to say japanese hair guy so. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it, it's been a lot of positive honestly like whenever i joined ops i can easily say that i was just like maybe i was nowhere near who i wanted to be and i was like suffering with like a lot of pain and i don't think that ops was the only reason that i've like kind of grown on past that but i think that it was nice for me to be able to like see bullshitters like on the video see how they were bullshitting and then be able to turn like the fingers back and look inward because those were patterns i might not have ever noticed in myself mm -hmm. um but now it's like every single week like i'm forced to like remember all these patterns that i've been like setting in and like all of my goals i'm like okay like i see a video on xyz person and it's like i never want to be that guy like i never want to have that quality so just constantly going through that with different people it's like now i've got 500 different things that i never want to do and like i can like set my own standards to never do those things and i probably wouldn't have seen them before see, like oh i never want to no like like, the celebrities your type or is it just random it's random i think it, it's very random i think that like i I don't know for the people of my type like in the celebrity docs like i can't really say that i like entirely relate to them like i think that we've got like the same like like human needs like i can same functions like i can like see how we have like the same like like i guess patterns i keep saying that word i wish i could come up with a new one um but like i can see sure, it pattern. i just are you saying pattern yet so i don't i haven't noticed that meta. oh shit i called <laughs> it out i should have <laughs> yeah like <laughs> Like I just I don't really relate to them very much, but uh, but like yeah, like whenever Nancy Cartwright laughs, it like feels like drills in my ear holes, and <laughs> I'm significantly I like I laugh significantly I laugh. less. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Or like when Oprah goes, "Whoa, is me?" I'm like, "Dude, shut the fuck up!" Like, get it off TV. But then it's also nice because, like, I'm like, "Oh, okay." Like, there are these very successful people that do the same thing as me, so you know, I'll be able to make it if I want to. <laughs> I don't relate to that. Every time a lead te says, "Actually," they're logically speaking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I had to like. 
Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. If I if I ever if I had a nickel for every time somebody was telling me something and then I went actually, <laughs> I would be so rich right now. <laughs> it's the most annoying, <laughs> jarring thing to do to someone. Actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, statistically speaking, it might be a vibe killer, but it also might be really good for getting the best result. So it's all yeah. about how you want to look at it. Well, it doesn't actually. like. <laughs> I hate it when people yeah, actually you're, you're wrong. Because I, yeah. You, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Being a note machine, and when you see it, you cringe, and they're like, you, it, you cringe because you also do it. If you didn't do it yourself, mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't care that much. But if you see it in yeah. yourself, it really like really good shit. Yeah, yeah, um, that's very true. And that does take a lot of brain power to be like, oh wait, should I do that? Yeah. Oh my god! Now I notice it every day. <laughs> That's the first step is like awareness, right? And then you can start fixing the problem because you got to be, I guess, aware of the problem to fix it, right? So hey, no, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! People like me and you think that we've got to fix the problem. Other people don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Like that they are aware of the problem? They're like, Meh. I think that about <laughs> just That's kind of zen though, in a way. That's actually not the worst thing. I just be like, yeah, that's how I am, you know, kind of an asshole. <laughs> no, that feels so nematode to me. Like, <laughs> well, I was born a nematode. I'll always be a nematode. <laughs> hey, take pride in being a nematode, you know? Like, I'm the best honest. nematode you ever met. <laughs> <laughs> Never God, seen no. like this. <laughs> yeah, I had that whole geographic the other day. That's how cool of a nematode I am. <laughs> I was on prime time. <laughs> Put me on the movie screen. You ever seen a nematode like this? No, you've only seen one, and it was on that movie. Okay. That's just yeah, cool. literally. <laughs> <laughs> the book in question, How to Eliminate All Nematodes. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Cool. Um, I feel like there was another question I had for you, and I don't. I can't. I don't remember, remember because I, I never remember. The things I read. <laughs> oh, duh. This is like, well, one of the most important questions. I almost completely forgot this one. Um, so what are you doing now? Oh, and I haven't even checked the chat. Sorry, I've had this in full screen. Let me just give this a quick. I haven't either. I'm not going to. Oh, it makes no. me so nervous. Oh, really? Um, we yeah. don't, not usually a lot. Oh, no, you can, you can pull up the questions later on. But then like, once I kind of like break into like the other like view of like, oh my God, it's not just me and you talking, then my brain goes. Oh, yeah, I should explode. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, there's and there's there's no questions. I just check, so it's yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, now uh, I don't know if I should be offended. Like, <laughs> it's just no. It's it's the same every video. Well, especially with this time period, because I think mm -hmm. most viewers are in the U.S., so most people are working and stuff right now. So yeah. If I do it later at night, it's better. I really the only ones I have a lot of questions on are if I have like Dave or Shan on, or if it's someone that has like a big channel or something already. And that then makes sense. Otherwise, yeah. we get usually zero, maybe one. Maybe, maybe somebody will feel bad when at the end I'm like, okay, let's see if we have any questions. And it's like, oh. <laughs> okay, There's team, go ahead and put your questions down in the box. <laughs> somebody will, will like type something just to be nice, you know? But <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are the things that you're doing now, if there is stuff that you're doing now, um, uh, to help yourself grow and mature as a person and yeah, what, what's the, what are you, uh, either considering doing or actively doing? Yeah. So, so, okay. This is where I'm going to get really awkward. Cause it's like, I, I literally can't avoid like talking about myself. So <laughs> Okay. I mean, I'll try to, I'll try to no, no, no. I want to, I want to, okay. I want to. It's just hard. It's, it's, it's a hard workout. Okay. Yeah. Take your time. But, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So I kind of think that growth is a journey. Like, that's really cliche, but like, mm -hmm. you know, with all the different seasons of life, there's different needs for growth. Um, and then whatever environment you're in, you know, you've got to grow in different ways. And, I definitely started my my journey at like 16. I think that I was kind of like very early on, like I, I knew my flaws like to a T. And around 16 was whenever I was like, dude, I've got to get my identity in check. Like I can't like, I cannot let this like run over me over and over again. Because like I got bullied really hard like whenever I was like growing up. And it was all because I was, you know, like just... 
I was the nice guy. I was the guy that people could walk over and then I would be the one to apologize to them. Like, so effie, like, and I just mm -hmm. kind of realized from very early on that, you know, like I was going to be the only way out, but I was also going to be my biggest enemy. And, you know, there's been all kinds of different things that I've tried and it's really hard to work on yourself. It takes a lot of energy. Um, yeah. But like for right now, I guess, it, like giving myself grace or just like understanding that like um like whenever you're suffering sometimes like all you have to do is like do something that you wouldn't normally approve of to just feel happy like you know sometimes it's okay to go eat a cookie if you're feeling bad and i think that's a really hard lesson for me to learn because i do have like very high standards for myself so I'm like, well, if I dip right now, and if right now I'm like the guy I don't want to be, and I, I like, I eat the pie, and I like go out and drink too much, and I'm like that's not the guy I want to be. But like, like it's really hard for me to rationalize. Like, no, that is the guy that you want to be because the guy that you want to be is balanced and understands. Like, hey, yeah, like sometimes you fuck up. Like, hey, sometimes, you know, you do really good. And like sometimes you need different things from every situation that you go through. And that's kind of like the journey summary with the worst specifics. But, okay, 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 okay. okay. No, I got, I, I've got okay. an example. Okay. okay, yeah. So recently, you know, where it's getting cold, like, I don't want to do anything. All I want to do is lay on the couch and watch movies and eat popcorn. And, you know, that's really fun to do. But after a while, I could, like, kind of feel my brain, like, atrophying a bit. I was like, I'm getting dumber. <laughs> so I decided for the, you know, like, for the first time in my life, I was going to have a healthy relationship with going to the gym. Like, it's something that I've done over and over again but it's always come from like the most negative place like the most like despair like i hate myself so i'm gonna go yeah, to the gym yeah. mm -hmm. totally. and that's like really common for people to suffer with but my my version of it was like very much like i am totally not okay with the sensory of how i look and like I am literally neurotic to the point where if I get this in my OCD loops, I can be insanely the best and like I can exceed everyone's expectations of like what a human body could like look like and act like and perform like and like just this grandiose sense of like, oh, I can literally be the best because I am more dedicated than everyone else and I hate myself and that's going to fuel me to like keep working even harder. Yeah. And like I went through like like so many like eating disorders and then like like physical ailments and like hurting myself like on accident because it was just like i was literally a psychopath like i was like drawn to like this like loop of hating myself and then working because i hated myself and you know i would try to pick it up every now and then like after like a year would go by or a few months like i would try to pick up going to the gym too again and it was just like it's still it it was still hard on me. Like maybe I didn't hate myself as much as I did before, but like, like then it kind of became like, Oh, I, I'm looking in the mirror and like, I can see that like my fucking left trap got a little bit swollen. And now I, I look fat. Oh God. Tie, like spiral yeah. again. Like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I, like, I just haven't been able to get the hang of it because it's, it's like still like, I don't think it's been until this year that I truly did like, like love myself enough to be like okay like i can do hard things and then not be the best out of you know like you don't have to be the fucking best like what the hell are yeah. you talking about no one's the best except for one guy and then it switches every like day like yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's true. yeah and so now it's like like i've kind of learned like i can take all that energy that i had towards wanting to be the best and become the smartest in a situation you know like the the most well like like researched or like someone that like understood the situation and then that kind of like takes the pressure off of me a little bit because it's like oh well this happens to like 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 any time that you go through this body process like this happens and that's okay and it's like almost like playing like the info dom game a little bit like where it's just like oh this this isn't because of me this is just because of the situation at hand like this information is why this is happening and like now whenever i go to the gym like it's like 
I'm not getting hurt. Like I, I'm just going because it's like I want to spend my time that I would have been watching a movie, and I'm just walking on the treadmill. I'm just eh, I'm, I'm gonna pick up this weight and see what I can do with it. I'm not gonna try to like PR every time. Like, and honestly, like there are some days where it's like I fucking hate going to the gym. I I really hate it, and I've always hated it. But some days I'm just like it's warmer there than it is in my room. And that is the only justification today for me getting myself out of bed and going to the gym. It's not because I want to work out. It's just because it's warmer in there and I am a neotone that likes being warm. And it's like, that's okay because I get in there and then I go do something. And like, that's like been big for me and I've really enjoyed it. Like now I like going to work out, even though I'm scared, like I'm literally terrified of people like in the gym, well, people in general and in the gym. Yeah, I hate like, going around in the gym. I like just, I can't focus on working out. There's like this guy over there and like, I don't know, he's like, has his headphones in and he's got weird shorts. And, like, I don't know. <laughs> and he's throwing things. Why is he throwing yeah, things? He, he's grunting a lot on the treadmill walking. I don't know. Like, like, did you just shit your pants? I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> So like now instead of like expecting myself to be like right in the like the the middle bench in the front row, it's like, hey, I'm actually gonna go hide in the corner with my mm-hmm. little free weights, like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm okay with that now. Like it, it's great. <laughs> I had this uh, gym where I used to live that was open 24 hours, and the nice thing is like some nights I'd just be up at like three in the morning. Mm-hmm. And that was the best because you could go there, it wouldn't be a single fucking person there. Not even anyone working at the desk. I'd be like, I got yeah. this. <laughs> It's like you look at the camera like middle fingers up, like, this is my place now. The intercom comes on. Excuse me, customer 1256. You violated our world code here. It's fucking 24 hour um, But yeah, I think you touched on an important thing when it comes to self-improvement is just like a lot of it, unfortunately is fueled by self-hatred and negativity, Mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, well, okay, I'm just at odds with myself and now I'm going to extinguish this by like hating myself into being the best gym going, doing it perfectly, (laughs) eating perfect, working out perfect, all this stuff. And then you're just, you're even less happy when you, than you were before the whole fucking thing. And you're even like, exactly. And you never solve it, right? The self-hatred no. goes on, goes on, goes on because you never like, it never gets resolved. So you think you have to do more and more and more and eventually you just- Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, I think that that is a, that is a big thing for me, like more, more, more. And now I'm, I'm kind of just like less, less, less. Like, dude, yeah. I only want to work on like one aspect of myself today and it's how I write emails. And yeah. I'm not going to be the best email writer, but like- <laughs> Does anyone On really- Tuesday, I was. <laughs> the number one guy switches all the time. I don't want to be him every day, but today. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of work. Um, yeah. well, I just feel like, you know, um, self-growth is at its best when it's a bonus. Like, when you do it, because why not? Yeah. You know, not because you have to, not because you have to be better, you know, because mm-hmm. if you come from a place, hopefully, of like, which is hard, like, but you know, that it's not an easy thing, but being like, I actually like who I am, flaws and all, you know? But... Okay. I got some time. Why not go do a few curls or something, you know? Not because yes. I have to do a few curls because I, I feel like I look awful. And I feel like, oh, oh. Yeah. But like, yeah, why not? Icing on the cake, you know? But it's, exactly. hard, it's hard to get to that because I think most people are doing self-growth so they get to the point where they're acceptable and then they can accept themselves, right? Yeah. But I don't know if it's, it works like that. I think the bar. No, I, I think that that, like, digs the hole deeper because then, like, your brain yeah. picks up on these associations that it's like, okay, like, I'm eating chicken, like just using my gym example, like oh, I'm eating chicken today because I'm going to be the best little gym rat. And then like, so now like, think about it. Every time you eat chicken after that, even if you're not consciously remembering it, it's still in your unconscious that like, you're going to associate those two things. Like that time that I hated myself and kept going to the gym and ate chicken. Mm-hmm. And right now, like, I just want to make bland chicken. Like it's still there. And I think, um, it's pretty easy for me to like dig into my subconscious and like like understand it a lot. I think that's a lot of my saviors, but mm-hmm. I can just see how hard it is for other people. And that's why like, I think that's a big part of my EJ freak out. So it's like, why the fuck are you doing that to yourself? Like, oh my God, stop. Like your brain is gonna remember that. Like you don't actually wipe everything. Like it's still mm-hmm. there. Like, like yeah. stop, stop, stop. But that's yeah. that's a little bit separate from the growth. Oh yeah, that's that. fine though. But yeah, that, that's, that's a good 
yeah, insight. I think I tend to ignore that as well. Okay, now you're you're doing this in this scenario. Now you're going to associate this with that, and it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. to do. Yeah, I think that yeah. gets overlooked by well, um, I know by me, so I'm probably assuming other. <laughs> I'm not high and mighty. I do it all the time. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's just <laughs> like I'm actually probably the worst because it's like every morning since I've been about 16, I eat two pieces of chocolate in the morning because it's like that's just a random association that I picked up. It like made mm -hmm. me feel good. And I'm like, that's probably not a good thing. You probably should be starting your day off with chocolate when it makes me happy. So, <laughs> worst thing. Um, it's but, not the worst, uh, yeah. But I think that's something to remember. It's like, uh, you know, be careful about the things that you do and like why you're doing them in the association because you're gonna or like and I might have misunderstood you completely, so please correct me if I'm no, wrong. But it sounds like part of what you're saying, at least, was like if you're doing things under certain circumstances where there's a lot of negativity and a lot of bad emotions, like you're gonna associate that activity with that negativity and it's gonna be hard for you to really keep up with it or really be yeah. have something to go back to. What is that kind of yeah. what you're saying? Or? yeah 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 that that was exactly what i was saying um okay. yeah and i know um, that's something i'm never considering when i do so, so it's, it's a good match but i need to like know <laughs> you're like, like you're like writing it out like what's the equation again okay lesson yeah three. yeah uh, uh, <laughs> the five at the end or the beginning what's the, yeah. I'll write it down. why is there a parenthesis like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah um that was what i was trying to say um with the caveat of you remember everything even if it's not your conscious memory you know oh, like yeah. yeah yeah that's a good insight as well yeah you're influenced by stuff that you don't even remember right Just yeah pretty, in yeah. your environment so I think that that's probably a good point about being consumed on is it's just like I understand that every single thing in my environment changes my environment like <laughs> I wouldn't trade that part that's awesome <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that could, could be a good thing um, but I wanted to touch on what you're saying like the okay so like I feel like there are different types of growth you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. I feel like there's growth by necessity growth by choice for one which is kind of what it sounded like you were talking about where it's like like the bonus thing mm -hmm. um and I think that like that is like to me the equivalent of like um like people who go for walks every day you know like that's mm -hmm. that's improving their health like their fitness whatever but it's not like super extreme mm -hmm. as to where like to me growth by necessity is very much like i'm shooting up steroids and like working out twice <laughs> a day like <laughs> yeah. like i'm gonna get bigger mm -hmm. and then i mean there's probably more than just what i bullshit thought of off the top of my head but like I don't know, maybe, maybe like whenever you first asked the question and I was like, oh, there are different seasons. It's like, maybe there aren't different like chapters of growth. Maybe it is just like there are different types and they can like coincide within the same chapter. But I don't know. Yeah, could totally it's be. Yeah. Really they don't have thought. to happen in sequence necessarily, I guess. Right. Like, yeah, uh, there's stuff that I do now just out of like, great, you know, why not? you know yeah. there's all the stuff where it's like oh, i really should do this i don't yeah. want to but it's it's better for me and the, the mm -hmm. you know, and I'll, I'll be mad at myself begrudgingly yeah oh just, yeah that's a good one i'll be mad at know? myself if i don't <laughs> um and then there's some things that like oh i actually like look forward to this and it, it just so happens to help me grow but you know i also like it you know um yeah there's a bit of both but it would be you know life is I actually hate the saying I was about to say it. Life is short, like short compared to what? What do you got something longer that you do? Um, life is finite, as far as we know. We'll say it like that. Life is finite, right? And do we really want to spend our life just improving the whole time? Like, what are you improving for? Like, prepare, you're spending your whole life preparing for life. You know what I mean? At some point, you got to just actually live. Like, when do you actually get to, like, right. just, you know? Right. So I think, and, like, and, and, you know, ideally, growth and improvement should be something that's just, it's a fun thing for you why you're here. It shouldn't be like, like you have to do it. It should be like, I actually just enjoy like getting better at my instrument that I play. It's, but I don't have to be better at it because yeah. there's some expectation and just like, why not? It's like playing a video game. What do you do on a video game? Mm -hmm. You improve your character, right? And you don't have to, yeah. it's not anything. It doesn't matter. It's a video game, but you have fun doing it. So I yeah. think I would, I would think growth ideally should be like that, you know? Yeah. I, well, I had a really hard time answering the question at first because to me, it's just like, like I, I do kind of see growth as like a hobby almost like mm -hmm. like 
hopefully that makes sense but um but then it's also just like like to me the question i want to ask is okay how many traumatic events have you had in your life how many many (laughs) no yeah it's not like an actual like oh my god please don't answer that but like that's kind of to me it's just like like as unfortunate as it sounds like I'm, I'm someone who's like been through a lot. So it's like, it's kind of hard for me to listen to like growth and wellness, like girlies. Cause I'm like, okay, you've been playing on easy mode. Of course you want to work on your growth. Like mm-hmm. I drink a green tea in the morning and then I go get my smoothie. And it's like, like what, what the fuck? Like what, what hard stuff are you doing that you never wanted to do, but now you have to do. That's like, mm-hmm. that's to me, like, that's the safety in friendships. It's like, okay, you're willing to like go through hell and like get back out. And so I was like going down that entire like rabbit hole whenever you asked that question and I was like, oh shit, come back to reality. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) So I don't know if I 100% get it, but I- I, Okay, do you want me to re-explain? It sounds like there was like sort of a fake self-growth kind of with the like, yeah, I, 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 I definitely food. lied. I was on the treadmill for like 12 minutes yesterday. I did 11 minutes. So I just feel like I'm going to today. Um, or... I'm really like Queen Slay Boss material today. <laughs> <laughs> well, then then the other, like the, the opposite was that you're going through hell, you know, sort of mm-hmm. thing. Um, yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, I don't really have the words to like, really define it easily as much as it is just kind of like yeah yeah like honestly i would love it if like like i had like a brain scanner like in my eyes so that way whenever i look at someone i could just get a quick brain scan turn that into like uh an interpretation (laughs) because i i kind of struggle with like people that talk about growth a lot like maybe more so on social media, which I know this is social media, this is not like referring to you, but like some people make an entire living about like wellness and growth and- Oh yeah, I and mean, that stuff's kind of gross, right? And it just- Yeah. There's something, I can't really explain it either. It's just something weird about it. There's just something that doesn't seem right. And where it's just like, there's just such an obsession with growth that it's just narcissism at some point. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, and then because it does, like, like it can genuinely become narcissism, like, it's it's very scary for me to talk about because I'm, like, well, I, like, I don't like complaining to other people because most of the time whenever I complain, people, like, don't really believe me. Like, they think I'm just kind of, like, making it up, like, you know, or, like, it, it's not that bad, like, kind of thing. So oh, okay. I get, like, I get very, like, I tread lightly around the whole growth talk because, like, I do have this association that like, okay, even if I talked about the ways that I grew, like no one's going to really believe that it was that bad. And also like, I'm scared to become super close to this like narcissistic personality that someone could relate to like on social media. And like, like, cause the more that you talk about yourself, the more that you talk about your own growth, like, what did I just say twice? You like, Mm -hmm. it's very like, like just over exposing oneself to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, Growth can be, can be toxic, you know? Yeah. I think like, even like, well, the, the narcissism comes in many different flavors. One of them is like, look at how much I'm growing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What do I have? 64 different pills that I have afterwards. I take a shower in uh, olive oil. I've got it. I take a shower in <laughs> olive oil. And like, you know, just put it, I don't know. I just... And then I did my like. There's that, but then. You know, and I did a face olive mask. Olive I don't want to call it narcissist, but another form of the ego is still the whole, I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with me. So I have to make myself better. Or I have to like, well, yeah. that's still like centered up, like kind of at the ego, you know what I mean? Like that's, mm-hmm. I don't want to call it narcissism. I mean, narcissism, egoism, they're kind of related, right? Yeah. But I'm not taking self- terms literally right now. Sorry. Self growth because you have to, whether it's to impress other people or it's to impress yourself or whatever, it's all kind of narcissistic, right? It's, I feel like it's only not narcissistic when you just like it. Yeah. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, like, that's the only, but, but man, is it hard to be at that space though? That's not like you can just decide one day, like, Oh, I'm not going to give a shit about self growth. Now I'm just going to go to the gym that you can't, that's not going to do anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're all kind of narcissistic in a way. We're all kind of selfish. No. All. Yeah. Like, we all that, are. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to, um, 
self-acceptance is a hard thing. And I feel like that's the only word. That's where the truth growth comes from is like just being one day and be like, you know what? I am kind of a fuck up. Mm -hmm. And I still like yeah. that about myself, you know, <laughs> that's the hardest part. Like that's it's almost, yeah. it's, it's, it's almost easy to be like, yeah, I do this, but then it's just like, and I like that about myself. Like, why? Well, maybe, no, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Like, but I do that is because that's, that's what a Dave does and it doesn't mean it's not going to change or that we'll get better, but I'm not hating myself for it because hating myself for something that I do because I'm human is denying my own humanity to some degree. Right. Exactly. Uh, like if you wouldn't do it to your best friend, Oh, sorry. Yeah, you, you, you go ahead. Yeah. You go ahead. No, you go. But it's like, you know, denying your own humanity and not letting yourself being human is like kind of narcissistic too. Like are you better than everyone mm -hmm. else like, right? that you don't make mistakes in order to dumb shit, you know? But that's what I suffer with. Like, it, it kind of sounded like the first thing that you said was maybe more like what is like closer to your reality. And then the second thing that you said, which you would be afraid of because it's your opposite, is me. <laughs> You'll have to restate that. I, I lost you there. Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to have to pull out all the magic tricks because I can't I, I already forgot what I said. I, so, I, like, wait, I was about to say, like, said? I don't remember what you said. Okay, we both forgot. Oh. Okay, okay. So like the first thing that you were explaining is like self-acceptance, correct? That was one. Yeah, that was some time back. Okay. Okay. And then the second thing that you were explaining, I'm going to define as like a God complex, right? It's the thing about like, like um, I can't accept my own humanity, that part. That's the God that, complex. Okay. Look, that's it. That's it. And then I just automatically associate that with God complex. Which so makes like sense. you've got, yeah. yeah. So I'm about to forget again. So the first one, self acceptance. The second one, can you repeat for me? Uh, so I'm not denying your own humanity. Denying your own humanity, and to me, yeah. like these are, these are like two faces of the same coin, almost. Like mm -hmm. you know, because I, I can't explain that. It's just, it's just something that I know, and like I can't explain it. But like, like even your voice changed whenever you started to explain the second thing. It was mm -hmm. like, like you were very comfortable with that first thing, like, and very easy to flow through it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And then, and then came like the leak out of the second thing. And whenever you said, um, Jesus Christ, this is so hard on the spot to denying remember something while I'm talking. Yeah, denying your own humanity. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? That's what I suffer with, like, to the maximum. Like, like it's almost like every single human part about myself like since i was born i've tried to eliminate because to me like the perfect thing in the world would be to be a robot like ro a robot does no wrong like you just right. tell it what to do and it does it now you're talking my language <laughs> i had that wish for <laughs> in my 20s I was like, you know i wish i had zero emotions i wish i could do everything perfectly the exact way That's i wanted I feel. and yeah. not have to worry about that so no it's the same thing mm-hmm you know yeah I, I don't i'm not I don't, gonna be able to explain it i'm not gonna be able to explain it i wish i could though i feel like you're explaining it what, what do you mean no i am it just it's sinking so like low in my brain like i i'm gonna have to get back to you on that one because i okay. feel like there was something there and once i can rewatch it kind of mm -hmm. dissect it a little bit more and not be in the moment <laughs> okay. i think that i think there's something there yeah but i think everyone's doing that right everyone's like yeah not accepting the human part of themselves to some degree, right? Like, you know, and accepting right. something doesn't mean like you're okay with it necessarily. I mean, accepting it means you're not at odds with it. It doesn't mean that you're not going to change yeah. it, but it doesn't mean you're like, it, there doesn't need to be self-hatred because again, if you're hating yourself, then you're hating yourself because you're supposed to be perfect, which you, you're not, of course, you're not going to be perfect, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of yeah. a, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing to define, you know? Yeah. But, Oddly enough, I think most things improve. The, the things that you hate about yourself, I think, automatically improve when you when you accept them. Because a lot of that, uh, yeah. I think a lot of times they're kind of a part of the same coin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the way yeah. you act towards people, the way you um, go about your day, the way you do anything. If you have self-hatred and negativity inside yourself, that's always going to be in your way. Right? Mm -hmm. Of treating people nice, of uh, being a person or you know, doing the things yeah. that you like that self-hatred is always going to be there to punch you in the face. Right. 
-hmm. And so a lot of like accepting yourself and be at peace with yourself actually somehow I think resolves a lot of the things you were hating on yourself by actually accepting them. It's yeah. like my weird NF theory on it. Now, how do you ST go about doing that? Oh, I know, but. I don't know. Whenever I try to imagine that, it's almost like, like, this is also bullshit made up science. It is not real, but uh, it's almost like once you like go down the path, it, so you got narrow pathways, let's call them highways, because to me, metaphors make sense. Um, it's almost like you think, I-75 is such a bad road. I'd never drive it. I hate I-75. I'm not going to get on it. There's always wrecks whenever I go down that road. Wait, are you in Texas? Because I... <laughs> No, I'm in Kentucky. <laughs> oh, okay, there's a 75 in Texas that's fucking horrible. Okay. <laughs> no, I-75 here in Kentucky is like literally the worst road. There's always wrecks. Like I'm, I'm okay. actually kind of telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> in this metaphor, in my life, it's also true. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to but... my Texas to know about i-75 how shitty that place is not as bad as <laughs> that's pretty bad. are yeah. you from texas i am from texas yeah because i i always thought that your voice sounded like someone whose parents were southern um ah, yeah well, you but then it was it. like but you like moved yeah yeah <laughs> that's really good actually yeah most people do not hear an accent except when i say because you don't have one <laughs> yeah no i moved to germany so that's why i sound like mm -hmm. uh, like yeah Midwest okay you know yeah so that's cool. That's cool that you moved. Um, where was I at? I, I was talking about I-75 and about how like neuropathways, I consider them highways. So it's like, mm -hmm, if you yeah. demonize, if you demonize I-75, you're never going to make it like, you're never going to drive down it. Right. And so like, sometimes yeah. you got to take I-75 because it's the quickest way to get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. So like, I kind of see trauma as being like, um, almost like it, like, if you were to get into a really bad injury and um, then get in an ambulance, like the ambulance is going to take I-75 because that's the quickest way to get you back to safety. So it's like once you kind of like you go through like the trauma of something and you take I-75 and like you were in the ambulance, you made it there super quick, your life got saved. Um, then you can kind of like acknowledge that this this road's not that bad. Like maybe this entire time, like I just really thought that this road was that bad and it's mm -hmm. never been that bad. I was on it one time whenever I was three and there was a wreck and I didn't like that. So then like, it's kind of like up to the driver's responsibility. Like, okay, I'm scared of I-75, but uh, uh, I'm going to get back on it. I'm going to drive it again. And yeah, sure. I'm afraid there's going to be wrecks. Maybe I'll drive a little bit slower. It's raining today, but I still, I'm going to take 75 and like, like it, the like you require that self self acceptance in order to get yourself back on the road, in order mm -hmm. to get back onto the practice, like over and over again. And then it's like almost like every time you get in the car or like, fuck, I'm so far in metaphor land. Uh, but like like you've got to say it every time. Like mm -hmm. I accept that today, whenever I take I seventy five, there may be a wreck, and I may get stuck in two hours worth of traffic. And I also accept that on the flip side, I could get somewhere in 20 minutes instead of 45. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like that self-acceptance itself is kind of a tool to get what you want. Mm -hmm. And that's just me elaborating way too far on what you were talking about. No, no. <laughs> it right that's... back at you. <laughs> Different aspect of it, I would say. So I would, um... but yeah, I think like it, in general, like with your, metaphor of the road that you're kind of like, what is going on I, I i literally i hate my type because all i want to do is speak super clearly and the only tools i have are just fucking metaphors like god well, hey, sometimes the metaphors are the, what, what makes it clear so yeah i wouldn't yeah. get on the metaphors too much but no like I, I i get what you're saying and i think yeah also in general with like that metaphor the kind of the road that you're not traveling because you're scared of it and then your kind of relationship with the road changes over time to where you're more comfortable with it and you're like okay i've had rex here before and it's shit yeah um now but there you drive down and go 90. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like there's a lot of paths in our brain that are just really weak that we just have not taken that we're scared of and like what you mm -hmm. said like this is actually the quickest way there so i would yeah. imagine that's a, also a metaphor for your demons right like those yeah, roads in our mind are completely fucked up there's a wreck there all the time there's a giant hole in the ground. There's a sea monster. There's everything, right? A <laughs> sea monster on the road. <laughs> yeah, because like I imagine the road having a hole, and then there's a river under it. There's just an ocean. Out. And Is just, there also like, a lava pit? 
you know how about if you have a really bad demon you might might see it like that you know yeah <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to cut you off <laughs> so yeah but i mean like if, if, yeah i mean it makes sense though and then when you drive down the road you're like actually wait this isn't so bad you know mm -hmm. um dave fe's not so bad see you can do it you know <laughs> no but it's so hard like <laughs> Like, it's so hard. It's so energy draining. Like, even as someone with a, as a savior, I'm like, for you, holy and, fuck. okay, I wouldn't have guessed that actually. Well, I it, would it, guess, well, I would guess being responsible for like the tribe all the time would be draining. If that makes sense. Yeah. Oh my God. Don't even get me started on blast. Like, I feel bad for blast laughter because as someone who is blast first is like one of the most ridiculously miserable, uh, like awful function or animals to have first there's only four so i don't know why i'm being so dramatic but like it's so hard it's so annoying tribe members are stupid as shit they never want to listen like so i feel bad for people that have blast last because it's like dude don't even try to practice it like that's my advice like it's so stupid <laughs> yeah i know i to be honest actually if, if, if i would have any animal last it would be blast i even though this is not a, like a healthy attitude because you're supposed to love your Last animal, I'm like, I'm glad that fucker's down there. That's the least useful animal for me. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing it's useful for is like, honestly, like going to the top. And like, well, you got to, you got to think for a TI person, like you're not like interested in like helping the tribe out that much, right? Um, so it's like all your animals in the top three are all for you. <laughs> you're like, what do I need that tribe one now? I don't need that. Why would I do that? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yeah. But no, I I think um the nice thing about blast is when you get into it and you're like, okay. Because like I you have to get into like a blast mode. And that for me is really tough. I feel like right now I'm kind of in that mode, but man, it's like mm -hmm. I'm not always there. I'm just not really saying much. My brain's at war with mm -hmm. but it's actually really fun when you get into it and you're you're surprised being blast last you're surprised that people are actually like listen to what you say and actually like it or got something from it like you, you got something from that was that all that great mm -hmm. yeah nice i learned something <laughs> it works, you know yeah so. So i'm it, laughing it because i'm like i'm thinking about how many like lead like blast lasters i'm not gonna say lead yeah, that i'm just like like if they like post a video or like post a picture and i'm like like just honest and i'm like hey this actually really helped me it's like the quickest way to become best friends with someone who's last last i'm like oh my yeah God, this i is mean <laughs> you found the way right you found the trick there for sure no but like uh, like i don't know like i get i get it, <laughs> is it i like just couldn't see how you could go through like life like not thinking like that what you say could help someone but i guess that is just because oh, shit, that's my savior so hard I think it's like I everyone's think it, voice matters. I think it's projection because it's like, for my opinion, it's like you're already figuring out your own shit and probably doing just fine at it. For me to come over and give you advice, I, I feel like that's insulting somehow. You know I also mean? feel like it's insulting, but I do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Actually, I, I kind of take like the reverse role. I'm like, I assume no one knows anything that they're talking about and no one has given half of a shit and therefore I must come in and like help them at least put the plan together because they're useless and they need help. <laughs> <laughs> Silly uh, tribe members. <laughs> yeah, so I was I was um, talking to someone about an issue they had at work where um, they had a guy that was having a lot of sleep trouble and they went through everything and blah, blah, blah. And they were trying to figure it out. Come to find out the issue was, is that he drinks coffee at three in the morning before he goes to sleep. He'll wake up in the middle and just drink coffee. And like, he literally didn't know he wasn't supposed to be doing that. And so like, I think sometimes you have to kind of assume people don't know what they're talking about to reach this guy because they were about to sign, probably sign him up for some like sleep care lab. Yeah. Thing. Or get yeah. him a pillow when really yeah. he's like, drinking fucking coffee. At like <laughs> it's like you gotta have advice for both, you know, which is tough because at the same time, it's like if I were trying to help this guy, I wouldn't ask him be like, okay, you having trouble sleeping? Are you drinking coffee at three in the morning? No. Okay. Yeah, like, like, it's so insulting. <laughs> <laughs> it's so insulting. 
nothing but like the fact that it's the truth it makes me go back to what i was saying earlier <laughs> god i hate reality why do i have to be in it <laughs> yeah so i mean you got to have blaster tips because there are people that need blaster tips and then you got to have the other tips that are consumed tips i guess we need both you know you know I i'm thinking we could unite and um like just like you know take turns like and then you know eventually we would create the perfect system yeah do you want to do the next growth talk you could just wear like a beanie or something see if anyone notices they just act like yeah, so. they don't have us done. Nice to be. anyway what were we talking about today <laughs> what type were you again i'm sorry i wasn't listening <laughs> what did you say again uh we'll, we'll skip it anyway. didn't interest me <laughs> even effie you know i don't give a fuck <laughs> No, I'm just teasing you. Okay, that might be an idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm just teasing. Oh, okay, I haven't checked. Oh, sorry. I should never mind. I forget what I was about to say. No, you can mention the chat. I'm, I'm not going to. You know what? I, I, I'm very intuitive, Dave. Apparently, wow. I saw your eyes move to the computer screen and I said, oh, he's going to mention the chat. That's, that's very impressive. <laughs> Uh, da, da, da. Let's go. What did what did the teeps? Oh, a nice comment for you. It's not a question. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm not gonna cry on camera, but that was very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Should I oh, like cry on camera? We do have a question. How does being a chaos monkey show up in your life? all at once and way too much like like oh my god like I, I make jokes all the time it's like i'm so controlled throughout the week and i'm like such an adult that like by the time like the weekend comes or like you know insert whatever like the weekend is just a metaphor at this point but it is also literal um like i just i want to do whatever i want to do and i I hate whoever stops me from like getting in the way of like, if I want to go run around and spend all my money, which I don't actually do, but like, you know, if I want the extra drink, if a friend tells me, no, it's like, dude, fuck you. I do what I want. I'm crazy, bro. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel like I keep using drinking. Cause that's how I like, I, like I, that was used to be my practice for it. But now it's just like, like, if I want to disappear into the, here's what's actually happening. If I want to disappear in the basement and work on my Arduino and like code it and make stupid Arduino? little lights, my Arduino, yeah. What's up? Like the little, it's it's like a little robot. They're like super cheap. Like you can you program, program them. Robot? That's super cool. Okay. I, I mean, it's like, it's it's basically like robotics for toddlers, but. Actually, probably robotic know, right? <laughs> for toddlers or not. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, but it's just like I just hate when people. Oh God, I, I don't even want to say this out loud because I know I'm going to sound like an EJ. But I hate when people won't let me sneak away and go hide and go do whatever I want. Like, quit fucking bothering me. And what so, happens when you try to sneak away? Does the tribe like? Eh, eh, eh. Oh, my, like I like my parents, like they'll call me and be like, what, where are you? You were just right here. And I'm like, yeah, snuck away on purpose, dumbass. Like, <laughs> the Irish provide them the, let's... Yeah. Oh, I am such a fan you of blast, Irish. You blast, no, no, you blast last goodbye. You blast last time. <laughs> That's what I do. That's you like... don't do that thing. <laughs> I, I swear to God, I'm trying to tell you, I think that we're the same circle in different directions. Like, I think we yeah. have the same problems. <laughs> like, I'm starting to see that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, the whole chaos monkey thing, it's just like, I, I'm really bad to be like, oh, I want to learn how to do this, like get super intense with it for like, you know, just a little bit and then move on to the next thing. And then I'm pretty good about coming back around and like, picking it back up again. But um, like, for the people around me, I know that they cannot plan on like when I'm going to be around because I just want to sneak away and I'm going to go do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it. It causes a lot of chaos for other people because I think that the best way to sum it up would be like I'm flighty, which to me I don't really see it that way. I'm like, what do you mean? I just didn't want to be there. Like, <laughs> yeah, you probably get to yeah. a point where you've been focusing so much on others that you just fucking have to get out of there, right? And then exactly. I would imagine people probably like 
that's not your normal behavior probably. So people are probably more concerned than yeah. probably that's... not giving you permission, I would think. Because like, if I had someone who was always around me all the time, always blah, blah, and they're just kind of like, they get kidnapped because they usually don't do that. Is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like... But that's a good yeah. thing to know that sometimes like, if you have an EJ that disappears, you should let them disappear. Because if you come yeah. after them, then that is going to like, they're, they're going to make mess them up my energy like, flow. Yeah, it's going to make them feel like that they're that they have to stay and not do their own. like okay. I did. Yeah. Yeah. And it it's it's so drastic. Like I get it. Like I get, you know, the the tribe's mindset of like like but like you 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 you're here all, all all the time and uh 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 why did you leave? It must be us that made you leave and it's like, yeah, you all are fucking annoying. Of course, yeah, that is exactly why all, I left. I won't say that to you. That is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like wait you're actually on to something for once <laughs> yeah. yeah all yeah. right uh analogy commander i'm assuming you probably want both of us to answer i don't i can't i, I don't even i don't even see it i don't see myself as that chaotic and i'm just certainly not structured but like chaotic um because when i think chaotic i feel like I'm getting in the way of something, right? Or I'm like making a mess of stuff. And uh, yeah, I don't You're know. Not that messy. Maybe I'm just blind to it. And maybe this is just me being, oh, I'm not the chaotic. My, we, meanwhile, friends are like, <laughs> you know. Oh my God, Dave, what are you talking about? It could be. I accept it. If that's, you know, me, then, you know, I think that's fine. But yeah, sorry. I don't have a good answer for this. I don't really feel like I'm. Necessary. I didn't either. I got so stuck on like the term chaos monkey. Like, I mean, it's something that I know, but I'm like, could you be more specific? <laughs> yeah, well, because it's like that's yeah, that's Dave and Chan's like term, and so they might not mean it in the way that we think they mean it too, right? They might have a different yeah, could be different. My SE brain wants to literally think of a monkey. I'm like, well, I'm not like a monkey, really. <laughs> Wait, am I? Like, you know? I was doing like the same five, thing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, if I were one of the three monkeys, I would want to be the one that does this. Ah, uh -huh. wait. There's wait. this one, this one. There's hear no evil, see no evil. I, I'm assuming that's speak no evil, but I want to speak evil, so I'm going to do see no evil. I think I like your one the best. <laughs> I didn't hear that. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh. All right. Well, I think I am... I think I'm out of questions unless you have a question or something. No, like. I'm going to be honest with you. I think, I think the energy tank like ran out. Okay. I'm trying That's to be fair. smart. And like, I, I like this happens every time. It's just like, Oh, do you have any questions for me? And it's like, no, nobody I ever has remember if I did for anyone. Yeah. I've, I've been asked that question probably a thousand times over my, and not once have I actually, less a job interview. I come with like bullshit questions. I just make something up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just want to know how I could possibly be the best employee for you. Like that. you know, whatever. Us, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's fine. I just thought I'd throw that out there, but, um, yeah, but yeah, you. thank you so much for coming on. Uh, this is really good. Uh, really informative. I hope, yeah, the people watching that y'all got something out of it as well. If you have any questions for me or Natalie, please leave um, a comment and I won't um, respond. <laughs> you won't respond, but I'll, I'll maybe, if it's, I'll be, I'll ask her and be like, Hey, there's a comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll you message wanna... me and I'll be like, Oh, Dave messaged me. I got to respond. I'll, 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 I'll cover all that. Don't worry. I, I got it. So, um, so yeah, we'll end the live stream now, but we'll still be in StreamYard or whatever. But everyone have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks guys. Bye everyone. And now the awkward moment where I have to find the end broadcast button and it takes like an additional 10 seconds.